Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this afternoon mountain weather update. My first stop is to where it is still snowing very hard. This is up at uh, Alta Ski Area in the Wasatch and really an overperforming flow here with this. Uh, I was forecasting 12, 13 inches and we're now at about 20 for the last 24 hours. Storm total of like 23 inches and it's still coming down. I think you could still pick up another potentially four inches. So tomorrow is going to be a big powder day. Brighton, Solitude, Alta, Snowbird. It's pretty incredible to see this, but just the perfect flow to overperform, outperform the forecast in this uh, in this scenario. So here's Colorado. This is up at Aspen Mountain. This is the second wave of snow that has now kicked in. We had a wave late last night, early this morning, with about seven inches, and then a big lull in the action. We waited, and here here's the second shot. And this will be the case across most of the central and northern mountains of Colorado. This will push out another four to eight inches of accumulation. So we're talking about a powder day on Saturday for the I-70 corridor, the western slope, the continental divide, all these areas. Nice day tomorrow. All right, let me take you into my uh, bullet points here. Here's what I'm seeing. So that flow overperforming in Utah. In Colorado, that second wave is here. In Wyoming, your next snow, you've still got a little bit of extra snow, maybe another inch or two um, the rest of today. And then you'll you'll get into a much drier pattern on Saturday. The next snow, though, you'll get accumulation on 1210 and 1211. So both of those days. East Coast storm, we'll look at that, which is 1210 and 1211. I want to take you back and show you the... Um, water vapor satellite imagery. Here's the big storm right here responsible for all the snow in Utah, Wyoming, and Colorado. This is the one that will become that windy east coast storm system. Another low behind it will make it smaller. Another one behind that and it's small as well. Both of these are much smaller and faster. They'll follow the flow but they're going to race through the the northern tier. So um, Idaho will get a lot, Montana and Wyoming will get the most snow from those two low pressures. Pieces of it may break off and run through parts of Colorado with light accumulations. Here's the forecast radar and satellite. That's the current state of affairs right now. By Saturday morning, still snowing over the mountains of Colorado, probably a little bit in Denver overnight as well. And then it will fade. The storm will move away and the snow will disintegrate. But watch the Pacific Northwest. It spits out storm number two. Um, again, fast, but most of the snow accumulation in Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. There we are on Sunday in the afternoon. A piece of that will come down and lay down an inch or two in the central and northern mountains of Colorado. And then that'll uh, move away. But here comes the third low. So this is 12:11 in the morning on Monday. You can see the new area of snow hitting Idaho, uh, rolling into the, uh, the Tetons, and then also following the flow down into the central and northern mountains of Colorado. There's Monday afternoon, Monday night. And by the time we get into Tuesday, still some leftover snow there. Kind of gets hung up. Watch what happens by the time we get into Wednesday, Wednesday night. You see that low that may spin up down in southeast Colorado, northern New Mexico. That's been in the forecast on and off for the last three or four days. So we'll have to watch and see if that happens. If it does, southern Colorado, northern New Mexico benefits. All right, let me take you into uh, the jet uh, forecast here. So 1210, fast progressive flow, brings storm two and three in off the Pacific pretty fast. And they actually, there, there are some overrun overlap in precip in snowfall between the two storms. Looking way down the road, 1217, still a, kind of a similar flow. It's down, it's, it's moved south just a little bit, so we might get a little more snow in California, and then that could push some light accumulations into the interior if that flow holds. Um, here's, a tr here's the period number one, my latest forecast numbers uh, from the afternoon update here. Um, the rest of today through tomorrow, maybe another four up at Alta and Snowbird in Colorado. We're looking at potentially four to eight of additional accumulation up there around um, the central and northern mountain zones. In the Pacific Northwest, Washington State and BC along the coast get about a foot of new snowfall. Period 2, 1210 through 1214 looks like this. Um, potentially with storm two and three, I mean, we're going to see some decent numbers there in Idaho, especially around Brundage into the central mountains, maybe a foot, uh, four to eight through parts of Montana, about eight for the Tetons. And in Colorado, again, you're going to get some of that, uh, that flow out of the north, northwest, and you may get some light accumulations. All right, here we are, 1215 through 1217, potentially um, uh, maybe a storm coming south through California, pushing snow into the interior. So we'll see, that's way out there. I want to take it to the East Coast. Here's the setup. 
uh, powerful jet. This is what will, uh, this is 1210 late in the day, help to really get that storm and develop, but there's going to be a lot of wind. It pushes all the ski areas initially into the uh, the warm sector. So I am forecasting rain in Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine initially on 1210. Changes over to snow early 1211. Here's the forecast radar and satellite. Again, the green is rain, and you can see it's all rain up there initially with those warm temps in the 40s, even at the ski areas. Um, but on the colder backside, you'll get that change over behind the front, and then that will sweep through all the ski areas early on 12-11, changing it over to snow. So my latest numbers up there look like this. Your biggest accumes are in New York State and northern Vermont. We should pick up a foot around Stowe, a little more in Jay Peak, Mad River, and Sugar Bush. Um, those are the areas that will be favored with the track of this low, which has been so important. A little shift, 50 miles here or there, would shift that heavy snow band on the northwest side. But that's the way it looks right now. All right, guys, have a great weekend. Thanks for tuning in here as always, and take care.